Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our fifth Boxer Development Advisor webinar of 2021. Back to Boxer. I hope you are all keeping well and staying safe. My name is George, Boxer England's Development Officer for Clubs and Safeguarding. This evening, I'll be joined by Boxer England Head of Development, Kate Moss, and together we will be our head for the Back to Boxer. PTA webinar this evening. Thanks, George. Um, good evening, everyone. Great to see you all here. Um, firstly, just a few housekeeping points, so information bits, and then after that, we'll ask you to turn your camera on again and unmute yourself if you want to ask a question, we can have a discussion. Um, if you'd like to do so, please use the chat function um, at the bottom uh, to introduce yourself. There's lots of people you might know, you might not, so feel free to do that. And if you do need any support throughout the webinar, if you um, drop Dan a message in the chat box too, he's, he's Dan at Botcher England. And then finally, we're recording the webinar, um, so it will be available to watch back on our YouTube channel. But if you don't want to be on the recording, then just keep your camera off for now. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. So this evening will be all about how the annual club can return the safety to regular boxer sessions at the time that's as much for the annual members. Over the next hour or so, Kate and I will be talking through Boxer England's Factory Boxer Roadmap and Guidance for Clubs and Groups, explaining how we, we will be supporting clubs to return safely and they call it safety detail. Hearing and also hearing from Warren McGee, whose club now its pioneers for one of a handful of clubs who returned to training sessions last summer when there was safety detail for a brief period. Throughout the webinar, Kate and I will also be answering all questions about our back to back to roadmap and guidance. Firstly, let me start with, with a quick poll to find, to find a bit more about the annual club. So, this is how it popped up on our screen now. Uh, and if you feel comfortable doing so, we'd like you to answer the following question. The first question is, how confident do you feel about our uh, battery battery guidance and returning the Regular, regular training person has a four options that are very confident, somewhat confident, not very confident, or not at all confident. And the second question is when does your club plan to return to regular training person? So, uh, have you already returned May or June, July, August, September, or October onwards? And I'll just leave this for a minute or so before publishing the result. Uh, has everybody got access to the poll? If, if not, just drop a message in the chat. I'll give it a, a few more seconds for anybody that still wants to respond to respond. 
and then we'll publish the results. Okay. Dan, are you okay to close your poll, please, and then publish the result? That, that's great, everybody. Thank you for, for putting up for that poll. These are really interesting responses and I help us tell you about the webinar a bit more as we go along. And we'll also be revisiting these calls towards the end of the webinar. Now I'll hand it over to Kate. I'll be talking to Boxer England's back to Boxer roadmap and the Rouse and Albert Heitner. Over to you, Kate. Thanks, George. Uh, good to see that we've got a mix of people on here with lots of people very confident with the guidance and others not so confident. Hopefully um, this evening will help to just go through some of that um, and hopefully by the end you'll be feeling a bit more confident. But um, what I'm going to do first of all is go through the roadmap document which is our overall document and pleased to say that as of the 17th of May we've taken our first steps along our Back to Botcher roadmap. We published it in April and it sets out the return to play steps from our first step, which is where we are now with clubs able to return all the way through to step five, where it is when we'll be back to our full Botcher England competition programme. Throughout the pandemic, our priority has been the safety and well-being of the community, and this has been central to the development of our roadmap. We know that unless people feel comfortable, they won't return and we need to do what we can to help people feel comfortable. Now the time to be able to get back to Boccia, but it's very much a case of when you're ready. So these are the five steps um, and I'll just briefly go through to stage one. As I said, is where we are now and as of the 17th of May, organised club activity can resume. Stage two, it's dependent on what the government say and uh, with the variant news we don't know yet, we'll get um, confirmation of that a week before, so we'll be able to confirm that then. And that will allow for interclub activity to take place. Stage three is um, at the moment a date to be confirmed. We, it will be dependent on what happens with the June date um, and the ongoing situation. And we will then allow for local and regional activity and we'll have competitions that will be standalone events and they'll probably be quite informal in nature and more information about those will be available as we go through the roadmap. Stage four, we're looking at springtime and again, we're, we're, it's outside of our competition programme as normal, but we're looking to hold more um, familiar Botch England competitions that look more like what we're used to but there will be standalone, so there won't be any requirements to attend to get um, any sort of points and things like that. And that, that's to be confirmed still. And then stage five is through to being back into our full BE competition programme from September 2022. If you um, haven't seen the roadmap, you can download it from our website and the links at the bottom of the page. Um, and that we just had to take into account of the fact that it is such an uncertain, sorry, just go back one slide. Um, we've got the vulnerability of the community that we need to consider and the fact that it is an uncertain picture for now. It's been developed by the Botteringham COVID-19 working group, which was set up at the start of the pandemic to assess the situation and determine the appropriate responses that we've made. The government guidance and information has obviously informed much of this document too. So on to um, risks. In the development of the roadmap, we've had to consider the elements of risk. And for us and our sport, the participant risk factors, where we have a high proportion of our community are vulnerable is a key factor. The fact it is an indoor sport and indoor settings are riskier than being outdoors. There are times during the sport that we have to think about where there may be more possibility of transmission and we've had to sort of work out different ways that we could suggest things to do that will reduce that risk. And the fact that the delivery of our events requires significant travel for players and volunteers, including overnight stays, which we want to reduce where possible while the pandemic continues. So the roadmap will be regularly reviewed and progress along it will be monitored by the COVID-19 working group, which is now meeting every five weeks. Government guidance is key, as I said, and will influence our ability to progress down that. 
We'll be using the findings of our Back to Botcher survey, which we are now circulating on a monthly basis. And there is one live at the moment and you have until Monday to complete it. So hopefully you've seen that. Please do complete it because the more responses we have, the better picture we'll have about how people feel about returning. We're also monitoring the number of returned agreement forms from clubs to see the rate of return. And members are being emailed directly when progress along each step is confirmed. So we will let you know when, when we are moving on to the next one. So that's just briefly through the roadmap document. I don't know if anybody's got any questions, if there's anything that's come up in the chat while I've been talking through or any specific questions on the roadmap that we'd like to raise now before I go on to the guidance. Um, we've not had, excuse me, we've not had any come in through the chat, but one that was sent in prior to the webinar today was um, the timeline of individuals and group competitions and training and the timescale for returning to competition and how COVID may be involved um, in a year's time. Yeah, okay, thank you, Dan. Um, if you can go back to the slide with the five stages. So at the moment, we are, we've got the first stage confirmed and we're in that stage. We're hopeful that the second stage is going to happen and that will be the interclub activity. And what we're trying to do is provide some guidance around how clubs can deliver competitions at a local level within their clubs. Um, for stage three, we, we, will, we are preparing some information about what will consist in terms of competition for that stage and more information will be available soon. But in terms of our full competition programme, it won't be until September 22. But we will be doing competitive opportunities throughout this year, hopefully, if we continue to move along the, the roadmap. Um, it's difficult to know next year because we just don't know how it's going to happen. I mean, the, the positive thing is the vaccination um, rollout is going brilliantly and um, it seems to be standing up to the variants, but obviously things can change. So we'll, it, it's just going to have to be something that we continually review, update, and hopefully make the right progress along the roadmap and not backwards. Um, we've just had um, a couple of questions coming as well, just quickly, Kate. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm just, do you want to type your uh, message into the chat um, and we can we can read it out for you um, and then the other question is would any of the stages be brought forward if everyone was vaccinated or if things were to change? Um, good question I think stage two is unlikely to be brought forward because that is dependent on the government guidance and then the government at the moment are saying that the June 21st date is their last date and restrictions are going to be lifted. However, they have delayed their review on social distancing. I think it was due at the end of this month and it sounds like it might not be available for another week. Um, and that will tell us whether any restrictions last beyond the June date. Um, so we have purposely put in additional stages um, given the risk factors that I've talked through. And we felt that that was suitable for people to feel confident to return. And again, we'll just have to assess it. But yes, if, if we find that actually we're in stage three and we know stage four can go ahead, um, the problem is, is bringing stage five forwards, I guess, is, is how do we fit the competition season in, depending on how far down the line we get. But it's, it's all up for discussion as the COVID group will be, be looking at the, um, the roadmap on a five weekly basis to assess it. We've just got two more really quick questions at this stage, Kate, and then we'll we'll move on. So one is, will the um, virtual activities like Rainbow Cup and Tea Break still be happening throughout this journey? Yeah, so we've, we've done obviously a lot of different sort of activity over the last year. And um, while we would much rather be on the courts playing botcher, actually, we found that a lot of the activities that we've done, we'd like to, to keep in some way, um, even when we do get back fully back to normal. We're in this sort of transitional period at the moment where we're kind of, we've got the face to face still virtual and we're not, we're not doing much as a, as a team together yet. Um, so I think we'll have a bit where there's a lot of virtual going on still, but even down the line, we're looking at how we can bring in things that we've learned over the last year. Um, so webinars, I see that really continuing. It can bring people from across the country really easily without the need to travel. Um, and we've talked about how the Rainbow Cup can evolve and, um, and develop that. We're doing different uh, programmes really with the schools. We've, we've done a virtual competition. I can see that staying as well. So 
it's been really useful, I guess, over the last year to have a different way of working and we'll keep the elements that have worked well, but we're, we're desperate to get back to the face-to-face -face when it's safe to do so. So a bit of both, I'd say. Excellent. And then the other, the other bit was just a point around booking venues that some facilities aren't allowing venues, uh, aren't allowing external bookings at the minute, which is making um, playing Botcher a little bit harder um, at certain, certain centres. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we understand, and it's a difficult one to know until clubs start going back what the challenges are. Um, we're happy to help where we can, um, so please get in touch with us if there's something that we can do to help. Um, it's useful for us to understand as well why clubs might not be able to go back. Um, so we can we can see if it's something that we can try to do to help, or whether it's something that's out of our control. At the same time, something like a venue, we can see if we can work with the active partnership in that area to find out about other local venues that might be available. So, so get in touch, keep us informed of what the challenges are, because um, it's definitely useful for us to know. Yeah, that's all the questions for now. If anyone's got any other questions, pop them in the chat and we'll get to them later on through the presentation. But if you happy to move on, Kate and George. Lovely. Thank you, Dan. Um, so I will move on now to the um, club and group guidance document, which we um, set out early May on today. Um, again, this has been developed in line with information from government, DCMS and Sport England to ensure the safety of all our members um, as clubs and groups start to return to regular sessions. Importantly, I want to stress that no one should feel pressurised into returning to club sessions before they feel comfortable to do so. Many players won't have played for 14 months or more, so may not be at the playing standard they were pre-pandemic, and it will take time. The important thing is that they feel confident when they return and safe, and enjoy being back, of course. In terms of the information that's within the guidance, then, um, these are the different sections that uh, it's made up of. So it's about session planning, use of venue and facilities, social distancing, cleaning and hygiene, equipment, health and wellbeing of players, parents, guardians and personal assistants. There's a lot of information in there that you will know a lot about now with social distancing and, and cleaning and things like that, but it's obviously important that we've, we've covered it all. So while it must be followed at all times before, during and after sessions, I'm just tonight going to pick out some key points from it and go through that with you. So all clubs and groups are now permitted to return, although before doing so, each club must identify a COVID-19 officer. And I'll come on to more about this role on the next slide. Clubs must return their signed um, acknowledgement of guidance agreement form to the covid at botchengland.org.uk email address there, providing details of their designated club COVID-19 officer, which is um, you can do by filling out a short online form and we'll add a link in the chat to our Botcher um, web hub that's got all the information and the link to the guidance, but it's all within the guidance document in terms of completing that form. We also recommend that all COVID-19 officers complete the online Reactivate training, which is currently free to access until the end of the summer. Club leads and COVID-19 officers should understand the specific guidelines of the, the venue that their club is using and then communicate these guidelines to all members in advance of returning, ensuring that they're fully understood by all members. So just going into a bit more detail on the COVID-19 officer. The role is, um, of the officer is to be responsible for ensuring that botcher sessions are delivered in a safe manner, in line with our guidance for clubs and groups document and guidance from the government. Now, this role could be designated to a, an existing committee member or coach who's already familiar with the club's existing health and safety policies. Um, but the, some of the roles and responsibilities include supporting club members to implement guidance from Botcher England, um, ensuring all those in attendance understand and follow the guidance, that they complete a COVID-19 specific risk assessment for each session, and we provided a template within the pack, and collect the details of all those who attend the sessions, to notify them in the event of a um, event of a positive case. Uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, we would advise that all officers, the COVID-19 officers, complete the online reactivate training. Um, and obviously we're, we're here to support as well. So if you are a COVID-19 officer um, and you want to speak to somebody, please feel free to contact us. 
So before each session, um, just outlining some of the key things to do before each session. So the COVID-19 officer must complete the risk assessment, must remind all members that they should not attend if they are showing any symptoms of COVID-19. We'd recommend that all players book onto a club session so you can manage who's going to turn up on the night and pay in advance where possible. Remind players to arrive in kit to limit the use of the venues changing areas and, and to bring, get them to bring everything they might need for the session. We are advising where possible to avoid car sharing and public transport. If you do need to, the guidance document does include a link. So a summary of things to think about for during the club session. Providing clear communication and instructions about how the session will be delivered and where people can play. During the session, all those in attendance must follow the social distancing measures that are set out, keeping two metres away from those not in your household. All players must train in groups of six. That doesn't include coaches or key volunteers, providing they remain socially distanced to each group. And then those groups must not mix for the duration of the sessions. We are suggesting that players should only be assisted by members of their own household or dedicated care team. Players should only be accompanied to sessions by one parent or guardian unless they require more due to personal reasons. And we are saying that it's best to avoid physical contact such as handshakes and high fives as you turn up to sessions or during the sessions. We advise that equipment is not shared during the session, although where this is not possible, players should use the same balls and ramps for the whole session and that all equipment is cleaned correctly before, during and afterwards. Probably don't need to, to say this because everyone's into this now for the last year, but it's it's vital, more vital than ever in um, maintaining good hygiene where possible, including washing hands, avoiding touching your face, covering coughs and sneezes and avoiding sharing personal equipment. And of course, after such a long time away, I hope you have some fun. So after each session, just very briefly, um, once you've got any shared equipment back in, obviously make sure that's cleaned. There's a requirement to keep um, a record of attendance for up to three weeks for track and trace purposes. And if somebody displays symptoms or test positive after a session, then they need to notify the COVID-19 officer immediately. So that's the Botcher England guidance, which sets out the key aspects for clubs to put in place to return. And each club will have their own individual circumstances that they'll need to consider how this guidance is put into practice. What I would say is speak to other clubs, share what you're doing and swap ideas. And hopefully this evening we're going to get a chance to put you into small groups so you can have a conversation with each other. I appreciate there is a lot of information. Please don't be overwhelmed and talk to us if you need to. We need to include all the areas for you, so take the time to read through it and think about how the processes we put into place in your own club. We'll let you know when the guidance gets updated, for example, if there's a change in government restrictions that has an impact on our guidance and we will update it. It will be clear at the front of the guidance, so we will put a table at the front and say clearly where the, the updates are and we'll send that out to club league contacts and updated on our website. I just want to mention, please bear with us on updates. Um, sometimes when the government announces something, it takes a little while to trickle through in terms of what that detail means. So DCMS and Sport England will then talk about that and then publish information that comes out to governing bodies of sport about what that what impact the, the guidance has on our guidance. It can sometimes take up to a week on that. So um, we sometimes there's a bit of delay in terms of us reacting. And as it's an ongoing situation and clubs are just starting to return, our work to support you will develop as necessary. We want to hear from you about what would make your return easier and look at what we can to do to improve our support that's available. So it's not going to stop here. We're going to keep providing more support where we can. And finally, really important that it is very much back when you're ready. Don't rush back until you do feel comfortable to get back. So that's, I think, enough for me talking. I'd like to hear from you if you've got any questions about the guidance or anything you've made us he uh, have heard so far this evening that you'd like to ask. If um, we've we've had a few questions sent in to us, I think it's probably a good opportunity to go through those first. And while we're doing that, if you have got a, a question to ask, put it in the chat 
or if you'd like to raise your virtual hand or unmute, then we can um, go through some questions. So I think now we're going to come off the screen share and put cameras back on. So um, we'll start with the um, questions that have already come in again prior to prior to today. Um, so the first one is just clarification on the insurance with regards to COVID. Um, if someone got COVID at a club, are the club protected? Okay. Um, no, there's no insurance to cover against COVID due to the challenges of pinpointing when and where it was transmitted. Um, there is obviously the normal insurance for clubs. Um, it may be invalidated if a club is found not to be following the guidance. So that's where the, the insurance issue is. It's around following the guidance to um, maintain your usual club cover. Um, the next one was, um, what's contact information from Botter England with COVID help? Uh, yes, so uh, I think there's a slide later on that's got our contact details, um, so we'll be sharing those. Uh, but it's basically anybody at Botter England, if you, if, you, if you go through to the wrong person, it will get passed through to the right person. So um, we'll share that slide later on. Thank you. Um, is there guidance on numbers of set numbers? per session and cleaning regime? Um, so the numbers we've given are six per court and then um, that doesn't include the, the coaches and the volunteers, but it's important that you speak to your venue because they would need to adhere to capacity restrictions that have been placed on indoor facilities. So there is a limit um, for indoor facilities, so it will depend on each facility. So go to your club and just double check with them. But from a botcher point of view, we're saying six players on court. And cleaning regime, sorry, was that? Yeah. Um, yes, so what we've said in the guidance is um, regularly clean um, before, during and after using, um, well, use your own equipment where you can. If it is shared, then clean it regularly. Lovely, thank you. Um, uh, I think you've covered this um, just before with the COVID-19 officer, but does each club have a person responsible for COVID secure procedures? Yes, um, and that's something that's come down from Sport England, so other sports do this as well, have a, a designated COVID-19 officer that can help to coordinate the um, procedures and things that need to be put in place. Um, question here around um, wearing masks, so how long do you think we need to wear masks for? Oh, uh, don't know. It will be a government-made decision. Um, so they were looking to announce um any review of social distancing i think by the end of this month but i think that might be delayed from the sounds of it so it it might all be lifted from the 21st of june it might continue i think with variants and things i would i would expect some some of these restrictions to continue but we don't know it will be dependent on what the government say and we'll follow that Brilliant. And the last one that's come in before before today was, um, how do you manage um, coaching a group of seven botcher athletes on one badminton court at a time? Um, our guidance is saying six per court and we um, will review that. So it might be um, by June that that changes. But for now, we're saying six players per court um, and then you can have coaches and volunteers on that court as well as long as they're socially distanced but it's just a little confident about going back knowing that they can they can socially distance um, in a safe way brilliant thank you i'm just going to pick up on some of the questions that have come in the chat and then if if your question hasn't been answered um, or if you've got another question if you want to raise your hand then so um a point that's been raised is that uh, quite a lot of people at um a certain club um, can only travel on um dial -a rail uh, dial -a transport um, so obviously I, I think that's linked to your point about um, not car sharing or public transport yeah I mean there's there's um, it has yeah, at one point it was saying don't use other transport it's now that's lifted but what they're saying avoid it where possible if you do there is a link within the guidance that takes you to some government advice around safe travel Brilliant. thank you um, the next question was if a if you have tested negative or have been vaccinated, should the rules still be followed? Yes. Yes. Um, we we don't know 
yet around transmission and things like that and it's it still stands um definitely um and then just following on from that one um your point was around not having like high fives and things when you're welcome like when you get to a session but uh things like elbow bumps and things like that are they okay i would do big smiles um i'd i'd stay distance from people that aren't in your household just to be on the safe side and um while you you know you've got the increased risk of being indoors um I'd follow the guidance which is saying about staying socially distanced from people in your bubble as much as it'd be lovely when it's safe to do so to say you can do all that i'd um i'd try and avoid that thumbs up yes thumbs up instead and big smiles Excellent. um and then one that maybe george or kate you might have the answer to or um somebody else may have an answer to from from their session um off of their group is around the social distancing and maintaining social distancing um so if you're maintaining social distancing you might reduce the number of people that can attend per session um, has anyone got any advice on how um you could overcome that as a group um either um to unmute yourself and, and share or or put the uh, response in um the chat for us Hi, this is Pat from uh, Rumford YMCA. We run uh, quite a large session. And in over to overcome some of that crowding, you can actually split the session in half. So use half the call. Um, it, and it, it's not ideal, but at least it overcomes some of the over... If you're in danger of getting too many people on in your sessions, at least you can use half a call and they can practice short games. If that's any help, guys. Thanks, Pat. Um, I think some of the other comments that have come in, thank you to anyone that's been putting things in, is using a booking system for your club. Um, and again, there a point on using half court um, to um, sort of restrict, uh, to reduce the, um, increase the number of people that can be there, but obviously not exceeding the number of six um, on court through the guidance. Um, and then just, I think the last one, I think we've covered most of the others, the last one is if anyone refuses to um, follow the rules or breaks the rules, what's the procedure going forward? Do they get banned or suspended or, or what's the process then? Um, yeah, so we've, we've, we've got, um, I didn't say, we've got uh, some FAQs as well that go alongside the guidance document and we'll update those. And there's actually one around that. Um, so I'll read that out. So it's, we're saying that clubs should communicate um our guidelines to all members before sessions if any member chooses to ignore the guidance the club should provide them with a warning if they continue to ignore the guidance clubs can suspend any members from future sessions thank you Kate. Um, and Corinda, i can see you've got your hand up and you've been waiting patiently while we've been going through the questions do you want to unmute yourself and ask ask your question hey um hey 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 George. it's me coming out you might know me um, hey, I just want to ask you, you know what you're going to do now? How would it work? Like, how would it work? Like, you want me to pay or how would it work? How would what work? Sorry, Corinda. Like, you know what you're going to do in the box now? Like, normally, like, one team on the other side and the other team on the other side. Do I have a heel shake hand or will that be different now? Yeah, so we're, we're sort of saying that where you can probably reduce teams and pairs games, is that what you mean? So we, we'd have a, yeah. at least a box between each player, ideally yeah. two boxes between each player. Yeah. So although we are saying that um, match play can resume, I think it's just being really conscious of the um, the guidance that we set out in terms of playing and use of boxes and, and how you use that court to make sure people are maintaining that social distancing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I've, I've sorry. Really had a I think we had a question here about the PPE and I from Miriam about the PPE and I assume that's in reference to the post we put on the social media earlier today about the COVID pack for our clubs. So okay, we'll talk about this in a minute, but we'll be sending out all the COVID pack to our club 
what our member club how we turn the agreement of acknowledgement of God's agreement in the next fortnight. So is it is a member club and if we do return all agreement form we should be receiving all PPE within the next two weeks. Thanks, George. Um, Kayam, we've managed to get you unmuted. Did you have a question? Okay, the last, the last question we've had at, got this, <clears throat> excuse me, at this stage, Kate, um, was just around the slides, will the, the slides be shared after the, the session so they can be fed back to the rest of the group, um, clubs and, and shared yes. with members, etc. Yeah, we'll share the slides and also the recording will be, uh, well, it's recorded, so it'll be on the um, YouTube page soon. It will take a few days to upload and stuff, but yeah, we'll share all this with everybody. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. Oh, uh, so thank you for all those questions, everybody. And that was a really interesting discussion. And thanks, Pat, for saying that example of what you do at, y at the YMCA town in the Thames Gateway. So, so now, we're next, uh, well, we are waiting for the to join. For the next five, ten minutes or so, we're going to put in a few smaller breakout rooms of between about four or five people and this will be your, your, chance, your chance to talk amongst yourselves and say what your club are doing or planning on doing in the coming month in return in relation to our return to Boxer. So I'll do sort out the backup rooms now and I'll shortly be put out into a backup room and then try to know I'll see you back here in about 10 minutes. I feel it for you. So I think we had a few technical issues there, but hopefully you went into a breakout room and it just had a bit of an opportunity to start to chat to people about what their plans for return are, as they've gone back, which bits of the guidance they found challenging to, to put into practice, um, some good practice examples. and. I know the time wasn't particularly long. I'm just conscious that we don't have a really long webinar this evening for you, but um, we'll, we'll tell, tell you about it in a bit. We're going to have drop-in sessions, um, short drop-in sessions where you can come in and share uh, things with other people as well. So hopefully it starts that kind of conversation. And obviously if you'd like to find out more from what other clubs are doing um, and you hear about clubs that are going back, get in touch with us because we're going to be asking clubs to share good practice of what they're doing so we can kind of spread it out to everybody as well so you can see what everybody's doing. So before we go on to a bit more around what support's available from us, um, would anybody from each of the breakout rooms like to give a summary of what you were talking about? I don't know if anyone was designated a spokesperson or if you got that far. We, um, we didn't have a designated spokesperson, but I guess Patrick was... Uh telling us that, that they're already back and playing. Yeah, I think brilliant. It's all my way. And, uh, and Thanks. Gaia, 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 Gaia. Yeah, we, we spoke a bit about, because um, Anna's Anna's going, their group are going to go back soon, hopefully, and they're, um, they're hoping to do a couple of trial sessions. So I thought that was a great idea. And I think that's something that our club will do as well. Um, but the biggest problem for us is the being able to afford to run run the club, but with not as many members attending and how we're going to pay for that court hire when a lot of the funding things that we've seen have specifically been for COVID uh, related equipment, so like PPE. So um, that's our biggest challenge. And also we spoke a bit about um, how 
how we want to maintain the element of fun in the sessions when there's so many restrictions in place. Um, obviously, the botching and guidance, I must say, is fantastic. I find it much more useful than the government one, if I'm completely honest. But um, obviously, we want everyone to still have, have a great time. And I don't know, for, for our particular club, because we're more of a social rather than a sort of really serious botcher player sort of club, I don't know how that's going to go down. So we're going to put out a survey to our members to ask them about that specifically. Um, because I do have a feeling that some people might not cope so well with all the rules that are in place. So, um, yeah, that was mainly what we spoke about, wasn't it, guys? Yeah, that's really interesting. And it's good to, to sort of understand what the challenges are at that level. So particularly um, in terms of how... Yeah, people feel about coming back and the, the fun aspect, but obviously, you know, you're coming into a facility, you've still got to wear masks if you can while you're in the public space area. And obviously that can come off when you're playing on the court and it, it's just trying to balance it, isn't it? And I think hopefully once people are back, it becomes the new normal for a little bit um, and it won't feel like there's lots of new things to think about. And I think when you're first starting out on this process, it feels like there's a lot of new stuff. But I think as you gradually work your way through it and set your own club processes hopefully it will be, become manageable so that's great to hear um facility hire one is a really um key one in terms of across all sports i know there's lots of discussions at the moment because obviously facilities aren't able to fill their facilities all the time they've got to have times where they're, they're empty so they can be cleaned and they're not able to get people in so that we're, we're not surprised we're hearing that the costs are going up for facility hire and then obviously you've got that mixed with less participants that can attend sessions so it's something we're aware of. There are um, opportunities for funding available. And George, I think you've been sharing that, that with yeah. um, club leads and we'll make sure we keep sharing any um, opportunities for funding that do come in, appreciating the fact that a lot of it is for like PPE, but I think there is some, um, sometimes for facility hire can cover that. So um, we'll make sure we send that sort of information out, but that's useful to know, thank you. Hey, uh, <laughs> Um, I'm not going to talk to you, but you know like with the coaches, what will happen to the coaches when they, when they re rethink or what will happen? What happens with coaches, sorry? That... Yeah. Wait, in what, in what aspect, what do you mean, sorry? So like, hey, you know like in the box of England, so like in the box in England, um, the coaches normally coach the players. Yeah, and we're normally coaching the players. Yeah, so what happens to the coaches if they don't get paid? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
every week as well. And then it's it earned into a once a month checkup out of the first lockdown when people were allowed to go to go out, sort of thing. So it's quite nice to share that experience with the other people in that breakout room. You know, some of them said it was great ideas and that sort of thing. Brilliant, thank you. Now I think there's a big transition for people. We're not going straight back into where we were before. I think for a lot of people, I haven't been on the court for 14 months, haven't played. I think it's a gradual return, isn't it? It's not straight back into kind of competition and things. It's just about feeling happy to be back, mixing with people indoors. You know, um, for some people that, that is a massive step and I think it is just taking that gradual sort of step back. I'm just conscious of time because we don't want to take up all your evenings. If you're happy, we'll just go on to the, the last sort of section around um, the support that's available from what you need. Is that all right? So if we can just turn off cameras again quickly. Oh, I've lost everybody then. Yeah, if you... Uh, Actually, I don't mind if it if it's like that. That's absolutely fine. I can see the screen. So uh, I think it might be best if everybody turned off. off their cameras. Yeah, if you turn off cameras, please, and then we'll just run through the last section. Yes, please, Peter. Thank you. Um, so in addition to the guidance that we've talked through, there's other ways that we can support you with your transition back to sessions. Um, uh, I was going to show a brief video, but I think we'll we'll send that out. Oh, I think it's on anyway. It's only a minute, so we'll, we'll play this and then I'll, I'll run through the detail. ending. <laughs> Thanks Dan. We're having a few technical issues tonight I think. Um, right so in addition to the guidance um, I'll just go through some of the bits that we've, we've got available. Obviously tonight this webinar as you know has been recorded and will be available to watch on our YouTube channel soon if technology works. Um, we've also got the um, our website area which we're calling sort of the back to botcher hub um, where we've put all the information and resources to support your safe return to training. Um, you can find the Back to Botcher Hub at the, if you go to news and events and scroll down on here, like Back to Botcher, it's got COVID-19. And here is all the, the guidance, the FAQs, um, information about the survey and uh, webinars and the future drop-ins and things like that. So that's where to go. Um, we're going to be introducing drop-in sessions that I mentioned from Monday the 7th of June and we'll be hosting these on a fortnightly basis and these are going to be opportunities for you to ask any questions you might have about the guidance as well as sharing your experience with people about returning. Um, we, we've planned for three so far um, we're going to see what the demand is like and put more on if we need to. We are aware that some people are ready to come back and want to talk through the guidance now whereas other people are going to be coming back at a later time. So we might be having them for a little while. So to book onto those, we've got the link available, which we'll send out with the, the PowerPoint slide as well. Um, 
we've got these fantastic, I've got one here. Um, we've got each one of these for each member club who returns their guidance agreement form. Um, and it's a little pack, and you can see George and Dan have been busy putting these together. Little pack of hand sanitizers, face masks, face shields, antibacterial wipes, and um, a little Botcher England information card all about Back to Botcher. And all bundled up in a lovely limited edition bag. It's very nice. Um, if you're a member club and have already returned your guidance agreement, then we'll be putting one of those packs in the post to you very soon. So look out for that. It's just a little thing to help you get you started with your return. Uh, one of the questions earlier was about who to contact. We have got our contact details here. So over the coming weeks and months, um, if George or I or anybody else from Botcher England can do anything to help answer any questions, then please get in touch with us. Um, we've got George's email address, or there's the covid at botchingland.org.uk address. And we'll be updating the web pub area with information as we, we go along the roadmap. And it will be um, on, obvious on the homepage of the website if we've made any updates for that as well. Okay. Over to you, George. Thank you, Kate. Um that always brings us to the end of this webinar. I don't think we'll have a chance to hear from Roy this evening because he's having some technical issues. But we'll try and record a short video with him as a later date and have that video available to put us back on our YouTube channel shortly. So I would just like to say a massive thank you for joining us this evening for this Back to Boxer webinar. We hope you have enjoyed attending and have found the information useful to support it all will return to regular training sessions. As Kate said earlier, if you missed anything this evening and would like to watch that all or part of this webinar, then you'll be able to do so as soon as we are, all, are going to be shortly uploading a recording of the webinar to watch it in the YouTube channel. So going back to the poll that I, that I did at the beginning of this, of this webinar. Before you all, all go, we'd like to ask you the same question about your confidence. So, having attended this evening's webinar, how confident do you feel about our back to back guidance and returning to regular uh, training sessions? So, it's the same option as before. Very confident and what confident? Not very confident and not that at all confident. And it's great to see that we've got about 92% of people voting already. 100% that's great. Thanks everybody for voting. Dan, are you able to say to Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's brilliant to see. 77% are very confident about the guidance now, and the other 15% are somewhat confident about the guidance. And so it, it, it's great that you've found this webinar useful tonight, and I hope you have, and I hope you all, all enjoyed attending. Um, so, finally, that's all from Kate and I this evening. We hope to see you back on, court, on the court every soon and that you enjoy getting back to back uh, and you find it safe to do so. In the meantime, as Kate said before, please remember to continue to complete our back to back survey. This will help guide our return to back to over the coming month. Until then, we hope that you stay, stay safe and keep smiling as we hopefully reach the end of this awful pandemic. Thank you and good night.